All right, we're gonna do a quick overview of how I remove ICs that have been installed backwards. Uh, common practice, it happens. You know, we don't wanna do it, but after 20 years, I'm still making this mistake. So here we have a TLO 72 put in backwards intentionally. So roast me in the comments for wrecking a perfectly good IC. But uh, if it's in this case, if the chip has been installed backwards and powered on and fried and you don't need to save it, you might as well just cut it out. Um, so this really more, more applies to parts that have been fried that you don't need to try to salvage. So what we're going to first do is using your side cutters, you're going to cut every pin of the IC carefully. What's going to happen when you get that last pin, the, the actual IC is going to kind of go flying. So there we go. You're left with just the pins sitting in the board. So let's zoom in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of solder to each pin. Because I always, I always say adding a little bit of solder is kind of like... Kind of like uh, lubricating the joint, so to speak, makes things flow. You might find that the, the pins actually just pop out when you're trying to add more solder, which is okay. All right, so next we're gonna use tweezers to grab the pins after we heat them up and just pull them out. And the purpose of this is to remove the debris from the hole so that when we use a, say, desoldering pump, you'd be surprised on, I do more desoldering with one of these than I do like a proper desoldering gun. These work a lot easier when there isn't anything in the hole. Or a lot, they work a lot better, I should say. So you're going to heat up the solder, put the pump over the hole, and it clears much easier than if it had the pin in the hole. Oops. Sorry about that. Isopropyl alcohol, clean off some of the excess flux and nastiness. Ready to roll. Like a soul. 